No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world, and today we got the underrated motherfucker of the century. Mm-hmm. Does that sound fair? The GOAT. I can't tell how sick you are of uh, hearing the underrated thing. Too sick. <laughs> I, I prefer you not say it. <laughs> you want us to start over? Nah, keep going. Let's vibe out. <laughs> it's KK in the fucking building. Yeah, for how you sure. feeling, man? I'm blessed, dog. How you feeling? That was great. You know, I got to spend the weekend listening to a lot of your music, so I feel uh, a lot more in touch with my, you know, sensual side. I'm like really feeling emotions and yeah, stuff. Yeah, that part. When you drive around listening to Pooh Shiesty all the time, you don't really get that, you know? Oh, yeah. You're going to kill some shit. <laughs> <laughs> you want to kill some shit. Trying to push that out of my mind right put some, now. Put some know? camp on. You're going to vibe out. You know what I'm saying? You're going to feel real play and try to get some money. That's real. Definitely. Um, um, so w- where are you at right now in the life of K-Camp? How, how are you feeling? What's going on in your mind, et cetera? Um, where I'm at, um, I'm playing a lot of roles right now. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? CEO role. You know what I'm saying? I run an independent label out of Atlanta, Rare Sound. You know what I'm saying? 5,000 square feet, studio building, podcast space, basketball court, production space, all type of shit. Um, you're doing podcasts or you're just thinking about potentially? No, nah, we got that. Oh, you you rent it out to other people or you're doing them yeah, yourself Yeah, Dolph was just well. in my shit last week. Oh, okay, nice. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, we, 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 we rent it out. You know, I don't, I don't do podcasts myself, but, you know, that's the whole vibe. And at the same time, being K. Kemp, being an artist, you know what I'm saying, taking this shit to the top still. So was that, when you talk about having that big-ass compound, was that something you always kind of dreamed of, of being able to have that big creative space all under one roof? Hell yeah. I had my I had my label officially for like, I want to say like 10, 11 years, bro. Mm. You know what I'm saying? As far as like, it was already established 10, 10, 11 years ago. Right. But, you know, the whole goal was to, of course, pop as an artist first, mm-hmm. get on, you know what I'm saying, then spread the wings and bring up other artists and producers and creatives and you know what I'm saying, the whole whole nine. And we we finally got the opportunity to do to do it around what, two thousand seventeen. You know, we've been we've been working out the cribs, you know what I'm saying? That was like that was like the studio. Right. The houses, you know what I'm saying? Where I used to rent mansions. I had a mansion out here in LA, mansion you know what I'm saying, we used to do that type of shit. Mm-hmm. But then we had to go to legit. So you know what I'm saying, actually got a building and really built a compound where all the artists that we bring around and even, you know what I'm saying, even artists we 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 rock with in Atlanta come through and just, you know what I'm saying? And just you never know what the hell you're gonna get out of that shit. That's dope because I feel like a lot of people their ver- their vision of success is kind of like short sighted. Like oh they, no, never that. They just want to like you know have some cars, have some yeah, jewelry, some jewelry and, and be straight. But, but nah, this shit bigger than that. But you see, like when you talk about having artists, but then also having the podcast studio, do you kind of see it all as one? Like all these kinds of different content creation are all sort of under the same yeah, roof. Everything creative. Right. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, everything creative when when it comes to shooting videos to. The, the man behind the camera editing the videos, the the motherfucker behind the mic, the on stage, all that shit creative. Right. You feel me? Definitely. So how many artists you got at this point? Um, True Story G, Lil Bird, Lil Bird, and uh, what the hell is Lil Bird? Lil Bird been out of the country for like four months. He ain't coming back. We got to get him back in the country. But uh, True Story G, Lil Bird, producers. I got trapping in London. He was on that slime language. Uh, he got that song with uh, Carlay and uh, Blue. He produced that. Um, J Rod, he was just uh, at the Donda, uh, writing camp, recording mm-hmm. Kanye. Um, we got some vibes, you know what I'm saying? I got this new guy uh, out in Cali named Eric B. That I'm thinking about signing to. Okay, he was on my project. Do you mostly find yourself gravitating towards like rappers or singers or like wh- wh- nah, What's your preference? I, I gravitate towards talent mm. and hard work. You know what I'm saying? I, when I look when I look for an artist, I look for an artist that either work harder than me or just harder than me. Period. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You can be the most talented motherfucker in the room, but if you ain't putting that work in, you you useless to me. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I don't just look for rap. I, I ain't, you know what I'm saying? I'm in, I'm in the rap game, but this shit just ain't rap. You feel me? Right. Lil Bird is not rap. That's, Lil, Lil Bird is crazy. One thing that occurred to me when I was listening to that Homecoming freestyle, I was like, I was like, holy fuck. Like, how does this guy not rap more often? Yeah. Because you're like way too good at it. like I rap like a motherfucker. I was huh? astounded by that. Like yeah. honestly, I was really taken aback. Like I just like have listened to a lot of your music and never heard anything that made me think that you could do that. Right. A lot of folks think that because of the Kiss projects. You know what I'm saying? The Kiss, it's crazy. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to the Kiss projects, that's what my fans love me for like the most. So I feel like it's my job to cater to that. You know what I'm saying? But I be rapping my ass off. I came in rapping. I okay. do both. Right? You know what I'm saying? The melodies, the rapping, the, 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 the man, I do all that shit. I do music for real. Why do you think I'm still in this shit? Mm, but do you feel you like feel you, you, have you gravitated towards the more melodic side of things a lot over the years? I've been doing it for so long, but I be trying to, you know what I'm saying, step away from it a little bit. But every time I try to step away, it be like, man, give me some of that, you know what I'm saying? Give me some of that singing shit. I want to hear that, you know what I'm saying? So I try to, the next project is a good balance of both. 
you know what I'm saying? It's, it's a good balance of both. So you're going to get the best of both worlds on the next project. Interesting. So can we talk about like just your early days coming up? Like, let's actually talk about you as a kid and everything. Like, yeah. what, what kind of kid were you and, and what kind of family are you coming from? Because I, I watched a couple of your interviews. And yeah. Neither one dug into like the very early days of your sure. life. I was a bad ass kid, man. I always got in trouble. I got kicked out of class, ISS type shit. I hooped, you know what I'm saying? Growing up before the music, it was hooping. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? It was basketball. Um, Partners was trapping. I was, you know, saying I was on, I was on the basketball and the music. They was trapping. You know, what I'm saying it was. I mean, I'm in, I'm between both worlds. You know, what I'm saying like I got, I got, you know, saying the guys who own that. You know, what I'm saying, but I, I chose to do the music and, you know, take it up and not, you know, take it up another level and bring the guys with me. That was with me. You feel like you had a musical soul from a, a yeah, young yeah, age? running the family. Uh. You know, what I'm saying aunties, uncles, everybody played in some type of band. Uh, my uncle played the bass. My my auntie sung in this band. My grandma, you know, what I'm saying she robbed banks and she was. <laughs> I got a wicked ass bloodline now. She robbed banks. Robbed banks, had a stroke in jail. Whoa. All type of shit. So you were around a lot of shit. Yeah. As a kid. Yeah. But so it was no surprise that you ended up gravitating towards the music. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And, and it was and it was part of the family line. So I guess, you know what I'm saying, that's just some shit that just magically just fall in your lap and you just go for it and just keep striving for it till you the biggest. What was the music that cause like I remember being a kid and you know, my parents would put me on fucking Marvin Gaye and the Beatles and yeah. the Rolling Stones. Like a nice mix of, you know, R and B type stuff and For rock sure. music and everything. But then I found like Snoop Dogg at like For nine. Sure. And that really fucking turned my ass For out. For sure. That's how it was for me. Really? I, uh shit, my aunties, my grandmas put me on like Sam Cooke, Temptations and shit. I used to uh you know what I'm saying? My, uh, a lot of my family from Milwaukee. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So that's why, you know, I used to go there every summer. But my grandma used to have like 60s doo-wop tapes playing all the fucking time. Really? And I was always attracted to the melodies. I don't, I don't think people realize them old ass doo-wop melodies be hard as fuck. You know what I'm saying? So I was always intrigued by it. But um, yeah, transition got older. You know what I'm saying? Just pull up in my dad's house. They playing Bone Thugs and Snoop. You know what I'm saying? And then, then, then transfer to, you know what I'm saying? Growing up in high school. Then it, Gucci, all this underground Atlanta shit that if I say the name, you probably don't know who the fuck I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? So it's just been a long legacy of just music and just me finding myself and figuring out who K Camp was for real. Right. You know That's what I'm crazy. saying? So uh okay, so when you're young though, like what would were you making music in like junior high and high school or sure. did it take longer for, for it to sure. kick in? No, nah, I was making mu- music since like seventh, eighth grade. Karaoke oh. machines. You know what I'm saying? I used to get like little DJ equipment for Christmas and shit. Rapping on the tape, you know what I'm saying? Sounding like shit, you know. <laughs> playing ball in high school at the at, at the at the practice, we always go to the studio. Right. You know what I'm saying? I worked at Five Guys at one point, so I used to go I used to go to work and bring the burgers and the hot dogs to the studio every day. Just yeah, what's happening? Let's get it. Wow. So you're I was right. I was always on the hooks. Always, you know what I'm saying? I was the one that count what's the hook, what's the hook. So you know what I'm saying? That shit just became. But so you're working at Five Guys, just thinking like this is not for me. Like I'm just not Hell meant nah. to be the I burger couldn't keep man. no job. <laughs> I couldn't keep no fucking job. I got every job I had. I got fired from, man, I got fired from Toys R Us. My partner got me the job at Toys R Us. I was there for a week. I fell asleep behind the boxes. In the, in the, uh, what, what's it called when you got to work early in the morning? In between, what's it called? The uh, graveyard shift, is that what it's called? We was moving boxes early, like 5, 6 in the morning type shit, you know what I'm saying? And around that time, I was in the club like to like 3 in the morning, you know, so that's when we was like running around the city just getting shit played, you know, 6, 7 days a week, you know what I'm saying, back in the day. Right. So I used to get home like at 3, 30, 4, got to wake up at 5 to go fucking move some boxes. You know what I'm saying? I never got a paycheck from that motherfucker. What? Fell asleep behind That's the boxes. Illegal. They fired how, me. How'd they not pay you? Oh, just I wasn't there, there two weeks. <laughs> I wasn't even there to get a goddamn check. Still should have got paid. Shit like that. I worked at the movies for about a year. You know what I'm saying? I got my partner hired. When I got him hired, I got fired. I got fired on my day off. Went to work high. Thought I was off. Tried to go watch a movie. Manager's like, hey, let me holler at you. Fire me on the spot. Oh, man. I couldn't keep shit, though. That's why I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm great at what I do right now, being my own boss and my own entrepreneur, you know what I'm saying? You ever th- think about that? How, like, you know, yeah, sometimes this might get tough, but, like, you really just were not meant to be the type of person with a normal job. Like, I think oh, yeah, all the time sure. about how if I had a regular job, I would have got fired that so many times me. over. I can't, I can't, even in school, cause you can't tell me what to do. You can't really, like, I hate motherfuckers think they can just... Do this, do it. No, I don't, right. I don't operate. My brain don't operate like that. I like to move on my own accord, right? And see shit through instead of somebody just telling me to do some shit. You feel me? You know, we take it for granted that there are very few times where you have to take orders from somebody that you think doesn't know shit. That's what I'm saying. And that's the definition of having a job. <laughs> you feel me? Is that you got like a 35 year old dude at Best Buy who's you telling you how, acting like he knows how life is. Like how the fuck do you know everything? You know what I'm saying? You here? Yeah. 
You ain't, you ain't, you really, you know what I'm saying? Not no offense to anybody working a nine to right, five. Right, yeah. You know, but come on, man. It's going to be hard. It'll be hard for me to not have my perspective taken seriously just exactly. because somebody else was telling me how they felt. Especially if I don't think I'm going to spend my next 30 years at Best Buy. Right. Or whatever job it is. You know mm. what I'm saying? I got to get the fuck on. Definitely. So you gravitated towards being the hook guy right away, or how did that uh, come about? That just, that just, it just came about, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was just, you know, I just had a, a nice tone. All my partners just wanted to do the verses, and you know what I'm saying? I was like, shit, I do the hook. It just really just fell in my lap. It wasn't no thing, like, when I first got in the studio, I want to do the hook. I want, you know, it just, my tone was right. Mm. And I used to always cut them, and every song we had, I was on the hook, and all. It, I was in a group of, like, 10 people. We called, uh, we was called HBC back in the day, Head Bust right. a Click. Oh, wow. Yeah, you probably, if you dig, dig deep, you might find some cuts. 10 people. Yeah, it was like 10 of us. Back, back then, all groups was deep like that. Right, you know what I'm saying? But how many... Like, Everybody how, didn't get on the song. How long did you think <laughs> that that was going to be something? Like, I, I never, besides maybe like Wu-Tang, I never heard of a group that had that many people yeah. to actually do something. But it, it, everybody wasn't rapping. It was just it really was just, just a click. It was probably um, like four or five of us that really, you know what I'm saying, was in the studio. Everybody else was just on their bullshit, just doing what the fuck they was doing. But it was a group of us, you know what I'm saying? Okay. But were you, like, when did you start to feel like you were actually getting some recognition that told you that this was going to work? First time, probably when I when we recorded, and I used to be on the bus in school and everybody wanted to hear what the fuck we recorded that night. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That was just high school shit. Cause we always been, you know what I'm saying? We always been them guys. I ain't never been no, you know what I'm saying, square. So, like, when we started rapping for real, and we all played sports, played varsity since Tim grade. You know what I'm saying? We was always them. But... When I used to just get on the bus and folks were like, hey, let me hear that. Let me hear that. That was just the the, the star fade. There ain't no, that's the bus to school. Nobody right. give a fuck about the bus to school, but you know what I'm saying? It's just little trigger points like that. you like, damn, these niggas fucking with this shit. Right. So it just, over the years, I just kept doing it. You know what I'm saying? I tried to, I, I tried to call it shit out. College didn't work out. I dropped out in two months. You know what I'm saying? The only thing I had left was the music. What did you so hear about college, though? I feel like you, you seem like a very like social guy. Like You, you yeah. seem like you would do well in college. For sure. There's a lot of girls in college. A lot of girls in college. My girl over there, too. What's up, baby? She, she might have gone to college. <laughs> Probably. We don't know. <laughs> but nah, you know what I'm saying? What I loved about college was the parties, for real. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I barely got into college, to be honest with you. My partner helped me get into college. My GPA wasn't shit. And he um, finessed it like a little um, a little loan, a little hope loan. I actually did a two-year to at a four-year, but folks thought I was at the four-year. Oh, okay. And I was on some, you know what I'm saying, just walking in that bitch thinking I was... You know, All right? Good finesse. But you were you were not feeling the school part of it or the no. Nah, I was, I was part? feeling it. I was feeling it. You know what I'm saying? It just I got my book stolen. Oh really? And I ain't had no money to get no books, so I just stopped fucking going. And that's if you really want to know the truth. I mean, that's such a cruel part of college. Yeah, they make like you buy all these expensive. Make buy books. all that shit. You know what I'm saying? Somebody somebody got me while I was eating. You Before college, you don't even know that there are hundred dollar books on earth. Exactly. And then you go to college, and exactly. it's like, no, you need like eight of these. It's a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> they can have them fucking books. Yeah, that's real. So okay, you you leave college right away at that point, or, or just yeah, how would that go down? You know what I'm saying? I really I uh I just stopped going. You know what I'm saying? I had a roommate. You know what I'm saying? My partner Dale, one of my close friends to this day. Um, he used to commute because my car had broke down during college. You know, I had a little truck, a little Ford Explorer. That, you know, all my engines used to go out. Right. So I used to ride with him every goddamn day to school. So it became a little thing. He knocking on my door like, let's go. And I'm like, go ahead and go without me. You know what I'm saying? That turned into two days. That turned into a week, two weeks. So he stopped knocking and he just knew like I was done with that shit. Right. And then I just, I think I went back to my mama's house. I ain't had no, you know what I'm saying? Because I got fired from the movies. Okay. So no job. No job. Out of college. Didn't go, you know what I'm saying? So I think I tapped back in in my dude's basement. Locked back in. And I think that's when um, I want to say "Do It" with Michael Montana, 2012, came out. Then, then Money Baby, then Cut, you know, all that shit start. So you just all of a sudden like the hits just sort of kept yeah. coming. But I that... had hits before that. Okay. I had I had a record uh, called "All Night" back in 2008. It was a big big song in the city. It was a uh, Walker. Oh, let's do it. Travis Porter all the way turned up in my record all, all night. So I already had motion, but I had signed a, a deal early that you know what I'm saying didn't work out, and I went you know what I'm saying try to school. It, I didn't been through a lot of motherfucking loops right. to get to you know what I'm saying where I'm at right now. A, a lot of it's crazy to say because a lot of artists don't don't see this many blessings. You know what I'm saying? A lot of artists get one song you never hear them ever again. Right. I feel like I didn't have like four five of these bitches. Anytime you have an artist who has like the upward trajectory in their career and then it kind of you know goes down or stalls out for a while and then they manage to bring it back, like mm -hmm. I have so much more faith in that kind of artist because yeah, for sure. that's just something that like ninety nine percent of artists they just don't do ever it. get to pull off. They can't do it. It's it's, it's and I look at that shit like man, it's a reason why I'm still here. You know what I'm saying? It's it's it's, it's a god. It's a god. 
giving talent in something I, I don't see yet, even though I see the vision crazy, but it's something, it's something I don't know yet because mm -hmm. I didn't got too many chances. But I, I work my ass off, though, right. and I'm actually talented, and I work my ass off, and that shit together is, is a dangerous thing. And I'm smart, and I know how to move strategic in this shit, and I know my business, mm -hmm. and I ain't playing no games. Well, it's also, it's like with you, it's like you keep kind of having these moments and that they're, are they, are they unexpected or do you know mm -hmm. when you have a hit that's about to be something? These motherfuckers plotted, bro. Lottery mm -hmm. was plotted. This shit wasn't no game. Right. You know what I'm saying? We we knew exactly what we was doing. You know what I'm saying? Before lottery, we had fuck with your boy and we had racks like this with a money bag on there. And coming off that uh that two-year hiatus, it wasn't even a two-year because we were still dropping, but you know how this mainstream shit go. You got underground, you got mainstream. Mm -hmm. We we satisfying the fans on the underground level. Mm. Um, we still touring, we still doing what we doing. But when we dropped, uh, I think Fuck With Your Boy was first, I'll kiss four, it caught some traction. But the, the label didn't pick it up and run with it. Mm. But it was a hit, you know what I'm saying? So while we touring, we still getting, you know what I'm saying, hit love on the road. Racks like this, you know what I'm saying? Same thing, Money Bag, we shot the video and everything, and the scope came in on that one. Could have been, you know what I'm saying, that too. So I told my uh, business partner, my DJ, you know what I'm saying, I was like, bro, all the momentum that we done built with these two and still got motion on the back end, but the mainstream and the everybody on the outside don't see it, this next one going to go. You know what I'm mm. saying? I kept telling them the next one was going to go. Lottery came. Prime example. But So from your perspective, was lottery just like totally left field in comparison to a shitload of all, yeah. like all your other music that yeah. had become popular up to that point? I, like I, what was it about it that made you want to go in that direction? And then for it to actually work, that that is pretty shocking for like yeah. you to take such a, a left turn and then to have it go so viral in such a bizarre sequence of events. Lottery wasn't planned. It was planned, but it wasn't planned. You know what I'm saying? That record was just me just popping my shit in the studio like any other studio session. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It was it was it wasn't melodic. It was me just talking shit, rapping on you know what I'm saying on, on a nice 808 that just you know what I'm saying. And to be fair, you were kind of like early on that sound oh, yeah. that we're now used to hearing. For a sure, lot. for sure, I'm early on a lot of sounds. You gotta yeah. do your you gotta do your research. No, you know but like that that in particular, <laughs> you just kind of like seized upon that at like the perfect moment, yeah, even if sure. it maybe didn't get the credit deserved at that moment. For sure, you know what I'm saying. And 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 like I said, it was it was it was expected, but it was unexpected. I ain't, I ain't exactly know it was gonna hit the TikTok world and blast off from that. Lane, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I knew it was gonna be some shit in the club. They planted in the city, strip clubs, whole loving it. Everybody vibed out. You know what I'm saying? So I knew it was motion. But as far as the internet and how it took off on TikTok, that was unexpected. Mm -hmm. And when the song came out, it was the same day. Um, not the same day, but I was torn. I had a, uh, I had to stop in Atlanta. The song was supposed to come out that Friday. What's it be? And Nip died. Oh wow! You know what I'm saying? So when the song initially came out, I didn't put it out. Mm. Well, it came out on the DSPs, but I ain't promoted on some check out my new shit. You know what I'm saying? Because I had a close relationship with Nip, so that kind of hit me in a different way. So I ain't even want to be that guy just trying to promote a motherfucking record and everybody. Mo you know what I'm saying? Mm. It, it just, it just. That's happened to a lot of people. Who yeah. Like you, you put out an album on the day of like something some horrific sh happening. Man, that shit and crazy. Just, how do you go about promoting that shit at that point? At that point, you know what I'm saying? Because we was excited about dropping it. And when it, when the news hit, that was just, that was just God. Mm -hmm. God, you know what I'm saying, came around and, you know, took that bitch up. How'd you tap in with Nipsey back in the day? Man, I met Nip through drama. Oh. Like in 2014, bro, I was in a hotel. And Nip, or not Nip, uh, drama said, you ever heard of Nipsey? You know what I'm saying? I heard of Nip, you know what I'm saying? But I wasn't too familiar. And this one, you know, cut her off and all that shit was out. He was like, shit, he trying to get in with you. So I linked up with Nip, you know what I'm saying, pulled up on him. I forgot where the studio was. It was downtown somewhere in L.A. And that's when we recorded between us, you know what I'm saying. That's probably one of Nip's top five, top ten, you know what I'm saying. That's one of them ones. To this day, I'm still bumping that shit. Right. It's just one of them, one of them records that that moment, you know what I'm saying, that feeling, what, what, what the message behind it, it's still one of them ones to this day. Right. Did you guys, how, how often did you guys tap in or, or do you remember anything in particular about what, what made you just feel like he was a, a real ass person? Um, with me, it was the day I did that record, you know what I'm saying? This is when I was just on my wild boy shit, just, just you know what I'm saying, fucked up every night. Just, you know what I'm saying, on some rapper shit. Just, you know, everybody getting the game me on that rapper shit. And I remember being in his studio and he had a white boy, you know what I'm saying, and he had wants and needs and he had hella fucking books. And I'm looking at this shit like, I ain't never seen no rapper with this type of shit in their studio. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, usually I see hoes and, you know what I'm saying, drugs. You know what I'm saying? You know, right. the, the typical shit. So when I seen it, I was like, okay. Obviously, he on some different shit. But at the time, I, it didn't register. I, just, I was reading the wants and the needs. I'm like, 
okay, that's some shit I want. That's some shit I, you know what I'm saying? But I wasn't really registering the shit until, you know what I'm saying, after, you know, I done pulled up on him again and I'm just seeing like articles come out on Nip and just how he actually moved and all that shit started to click on how he, you know what I'm saying, operate on the business level and just not stuck in that rapper shit. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people get stuck in that rapper world and don't know how to leverage their business and really take it to another level. So I was intrigued by that, you know what I'm saying? And I really started following that blueprint of, damn, all right, you know what I'm saying? I look at Jay, I look at P, I look at, you know what I'm saying, QCP too, you know what I'm saying? Everybody who really taking that shit up and not just on just in just one box and getting labeled as just a rap nigga or a rap, you know what I'm saying? That shit, that shit played, you know what I'm saying? So I'm on the business side too, man. I'm just, I'm just handling my shit all around the board, feel me? Yeah, it feels like you have kind of always known that you just wanted to be something way bigger than just a rapper even mm -hmm. early on and that like you sort of understood that making this music and having this part of your career take off was going to have to be part of this yeah. long-term building process Facts. like you have you'd have to go through this before you could become what you believe that you could Facts. eventually be that's a fact a lot of folks don't get that mm. you understand it yeah, well, I mean, I just feel like to be something in the rap game, you just it takes a shitload of self belief. Mm -hmm. But like a lot of times, having that, having that belief is like it also propels you to want to be bigger than just a performer at a certain point. Right, and then you get to a certain point where your beliefs and what you're thinking in, what you're thinking of, people, you know, what I'm saying they think you crazy. Mm. They don't, they don't understand how you know what I'm saying because you can't really put your dreams on somebody else who ain't got none, and you can't really force your your vision on somebody who, who vision is real small, who don't want to get out they, you know what I'm saying, city limits, who who ain't seen outside the state, you know what I'm saying? You can't really like drown somebody in that shit because they're going to look at you crazy and they're going to make you feel like your shit mm. ain't what it's supposed to be. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you got to separate your sh separate yourself. You got to isolate yourself, really just tap in on some learning shit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? A lot of folk don't know how to just be by themselves and learn some shit, get high. You know what I'm saying? You can smoke blunt, you know what I'm saying? Just tap in. Mm. And that's what I like to do, you know what I'm saying? The, the older I get and the more I'm in this shit and the more responsibility I got, I got to separate myself from everybody and tap in so I can come back with the information and take us to another level. Because in order to be what you're trying to be, you have to be a man of the people and be able to be in the in the club and have everybody like you and, sure. and be a popular dude. But then also when I have conversations about becoming successful with young people, a lot of times I mention where I'm at right now is really the culmination of me not going out and having a good time mm -hmm. frequently. You know, right, like right, I, right. I could have every time that I stayed in the house and, and read and worked on my career and stuff like ultimately like and, you know, ignored all my friends who were going out to the bar and having a good time. I mean, all that shit was like hugely you see important you to me now. getting to where I was going. Exactly. In the long run, you know? Exactly. That's facts. You got to separate. It, you know what I'm saying? It's cool to party and kick shit, have fun. You know what I'm saying? Throw, you know, we still do that shit. Mm. But I got to balance. I got, I got, you know what I'm saying? I can't, I can't do too much at one. Mm. I get clouded and jaded on this side, you know what I'm saying? So I got to, I got to balance it out. Tonight I don't want to step out. I don't want to drink this week. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I love drinking. I love getting fucked up and turning up, but I can't do it this week. Mm. I got to, I got to, I got to come over here because this is where the money at. This is where, if I, if I do this, we can drink a lot more on this side. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> you For get what sure. I'm saying? Um, okay. So I guess like, uh, when did you feel like, you really started to like where the music started to get to the point where you were really feeling extra confident that you had like reached a certain pinnacle in your career. Like, was there a moment where it just started to all click? Like, okay, I'm actually at the point that I've always been trying to get at, but then also like what was going through your head in terms of like trying to take that to the next level? Um, I think that moment for me was, I think my first album I came out with, man, because I, I knew I was that for a long time. Mm. I knew I was a shit for a long time. I knew I was better than a lot of motherfuckers for a long time. I knew I was smarter than a lot of motherfuckers for a long time. But like you said, everything, a process, folks ain't going to see it at first. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I can I can drop five albums this year, you know what I'm saying, give my best. And, and if you ain't tuned in, you ain't tuned in. But the motherfuckers who know, they're like, this motherfucker here. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And eventually, like you said, you tapped in on some old, you know what I'm saying, some, some shit. Maybe before you came in. Yeah, because I, I kept having the feeling yesterday when I was going through YouTube and just watching all your shit. Number one, I'm like, before I even click play, I'm like, holy fuck, this has 80 million views. Yeah, this has 100 sure. million views. Like, sure. And then listen to the songs and just sort of realizing like, fuck, like, and, and I think almost part of it is that your style is so all over the place and you are able to like be a different person on so many different tracks For that sure. <laughs> it doesn't, it's not like, just for an example, like when you hear Fetty Wap, it's like mm -hmm. you just know that you know. that's him. It's like impossible for you to ignore it. You fucking switch your shit up so much. I've been much. like that for a long time. And that, that came from me just 
rapping at first and then my fans wanted to hear the R&B shit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I had to break that up, had to split them two worlds. And then I, I'm a songwriter. So I used to, you know what I'm saying, write records on pop beats and any type of fucking, you know what I'm saying? As, as a songwriter, you don't you don't just sound like one thing. Mm. So if I know I can sound like, I remember Wayne said, well, Wayne said some shit like, um, damn, what's the bar Wayne had where you were talking about he just sound like so many other things. He and I just won, you know what I'm saying? But it's similar to that. But you know what I'm saying? I just, I make music, bro. At the end of the day, I just make music. I, I go off feeling. You know, I don't care what you put in front of me. I don't care what, what type of instrumental you put in front of me. Mm. I'm going to make a vibe, and it's going to sound good. So would you say that going in more of a singing direction was just because the fans were reacting to that shit so For much sure. more? Or was it also just like you being passionate about that kind of music? I'm passionate about it, of course, but that wasn't my, that wasn't my niche. That wasn't what I got in the game to make slow songs. Right. But I tried it. And they ate that shit up. Mm. So I was like, uh, I'd be a fucking dumbass to ignore it and just do shit that fans don't want to hear. Right. You get what I'm saying? So I went down that lane and it was working. It's still working to the day. Kids five went crazy. Like, right. you know what I'm saying? Like, off a of, off of, off of two year, you know what I'm saying? If they want to call it whatever they want to call it, they, they say fell off, but I was still working. You know what I'm saying? We know that we know how this politics shit go in this game. We know who got the, you know what I'm saying, the gatekeepers and who pushed the buttons for you to be seen. And and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a low key, you know what I'm saying? nonchalant chilling ass motherfucker so you ain't about to see me just jumping on the table screaming and trying to get all the attention you know what i'm saying i watch i, I people i watch people I, I, I peep energies i i see what the fuck going on a lot of folks burn themselves out too early mm. i ain't never been a type to burn myself out i always watch the game see where it's at see who doing the goofy shit see who doing the real shit see who doing the smart shit and then i come in and i and i play my role and i come out for like three four months you know what i'm saying go tour go go fuck shit up make my money go back to the drawing boards and like all right now what do you think that game changed all the time? That downtime is important to you to like yeah. come out, do your thing, be Hell in the yeah. public eye for a while, and then sort of dip for sure. Off. You know who 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 career I've been I've been really like looking at like and that shit so cold to me. Then they don't do nothing. They don't do nothing at all. Frank Ocean. That's a good point. Frank Ocean. Anyone that who can walk away for a couple years come on, man. and come back to the same audience. Come I mean, on, man. That's, that's crazy. they said that boy headline at what Coachella 2023. Right. That boy already set up. Mm. What the fuck he got to do? He can drop the project to the January first, two thousand twenty three, and go nuts. Right. You feel me? So it's shit like that. You know what I'm saying? You see the longevity in it, and you see, you know what I'm saying? Not saying that that's how I'ma rock my shit. You know, that's not how I'ma do my shit. But it's similar. Mm. I ain't got to do too much. I'm getting to the point now where I, I notice I ain't got to do too much. Mm. Folks want to see a lot. You are gonna get just enough. You know what I'm saying? Until I want to give you a lot. You you gonna know when I want to give you a lot because then I'm gonna be all in your fucking face and you ain't gonna be able to turn your head without seeing. But is it tempting? Flow. Is it tempting for you to just want to like go in the studio, make a bunch of songs, and then just put those songs out because you just you, you know you make Man. it like like that homecoming freestyle? You probably made that like the day before you yeah. put it out, right? Yeah, I made it that day. And was that enjoyable? Like yeah. that experience? But you don't know how long I've been wanting to do that, mm. but I can't. You get what I'm saying? I've been trust me. I done had a thousand conversations with my guys. Like honestly, bro, I can go right now to my laptop and drop. Seven, eight albums back to back to back. I can drop a song every day of this year, right mm. now. You know what I'm saying? But due to my, you know what I'm saying, contract, you know, I can, I, it's, I got a little more leeway now, mm. but at the same time, it's not really what, it ain't full what K can't want to do. Mm. Give me about like nine, 10 more months, you're going to see a whole different thing. It's kind of crazy how in tune you are with the public's perception. Of mm -hmm. you. Would you say that that's accurate? Like that, you know, because a lot attention. of a lot of people think they're the shit, and then they go out and they put out music, and they just assume that everybody else is going to have the same opinion of them oh, yeah. that they have of themselves. Mm -mm. I'm tuned in, bro. I know what they want from me. Mm. I know what I've been doing over the years. I know what work. I know what don't work. You know what I'm saying? Even if I try some new shit, I'm just trying some shit. If it, if it work, you know what I'm saying? I might tap back in on. It. If it don't, I might just fall back from it. Mm. But I'm I'm locked in. I know what the I know what the culture at. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm in. You know what I'm saying? I got my ear to the streets. I know who popping. I was tuned in. You probably, I, when you when you brought a uh, little pump here the first time, I, I seen all these little, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was tuned in. I know what the fuck going on. I know what's about to happen. I seen when you brought this whole new way to the scene. I knew that it was going to hit the game and, right. you know what I'm saying, cause a different shift, you know what I'm saying? But it came back to the to the real ones, you know what I'm saying? But, but when you see, as an artist who, you know, even at that point you've been in the game for a while, when you see something like that taking place, is there a part of your brain that's like, fuck, like, I need face tattoos. I got to do oh, yeah. some crazy ass shit. Of course. Every artist going to feel like that. Because when the game shift, you know what I'm saying, you always want to be ahead. Mm. You always want to be, you know what I'm saying, on time, on point. You don't want to look like last year. Mm. I done reinvented myself so many times. 
You know what I'm saying? I don't never. You can go look at my picks. I don't never look like last year. But it's crazy because your your talent is like the thing that allows you to do exactly. That, right? You know what I'm saying? It's that. It's it, it, it's it's hella pieces to it. It's a talent. It's your image, your brand. You know what I'm saying? And, and with your mind at. But I always see. You know what I'm saying? I, I I just know when to jump in the game when it's when it's my time. Like I'm not about to jump in the game when it's goofy ass shit going on. I don't fit in that mode. Mm. So I'm gonna sit back and I'm a goddamn. I'm gonna be in the studio recording and plotting. For if, if it takes six months, seven months, I'm still put shit out just here and there. But I'm not gonna just jump out there like, cause it ain't time for that. Mm. The game got transitioned and it got time. And right now it's a good space, you know what I'm saying? But I see I got some I got young niggas in my studio. I was just talking to them yesterday, asking them, you know what I'm saying? What's what's what what they feel like is next? And um, what they say hyper pop. Hyper pop. I hear a bit about that. Uh, yeah. Ken, what's what's buddy name? Ken uh, Carson. What's, what's what's buddy name? Ken Carson counts as hyper pop. Yeah. I didn't know that. Well, they was they was they were dropping his name in the uh, oh, okay. BK the ruler and shit like okay, that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I like to really just be like, all right, cool. If that's coming next, I know how to move on that. You mm. know what I'm saying? I know who to hit up or or, or, or feature with. Or, you know what I'm saying? Like it just, I'm on that shit. But there's certain shit that makes you just want to get out the way, and then there's certain shit that makes you want to embrace it and right. figure out what you're. If you ain't fucking with is. it, you ain't fucking with it. Right. But if you think it's like, oh, that shit's straight, you fuck with it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You can't be scared to fuck with some new shit. You can't be scared to step out your lane and step out your box. You never know. Me featuring with one of these new motherfuckers might be the number one record in the world. Right. You know what I'm saying? It might change everything. You right. know what I'm saying? You can't be you can't be stuck in your own ways and be like, nah, I don't fuck with that. It's my shit. I did. I used to be like that. Mm. And that's why a lot of blessings had passed early because I was just so stuck in my shit. Now I'm like, shit, if it's hard, I'm fucking with it. You got anything in mind in particular that you passed up because you were too stuck in your ways? I bet you got some shit in mind, right? <sighs> Man, I didn't pass up on a lot of shit, bro. I ain't going to lie to you. I was really stuck in my fucking way. That shit was toxic as a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no cap, but it's a lot of records from back back in the day. Pre, like just, eh, it's a lot of shit, bro. I just wasn't fucking with I, I, it's, it's not that I wasn't fucking with it. Just I was just in my head just thinking I had to stay K camp and didn't want to do nothing else. But mm. that 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 day, them days over with. What's it like making music that women love so much? Because it occurs to me like a lot of the artists I'm associated with, they just are the types of dudes who are mostly gonna have like gangster fans mm -hmm. and kids who want to be gangsters yeah <laughs> what's it like making shit that the pretty girls in the club actually like because i feel like i'm never gonna have any kind of perspective on what that is like i'd rather be on this side <laughs> 10 10 times out of 10 i'd rather be on this side it's 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 more fun you know what i'm saying everybody we make the music for the girls mm. you can, even the most street nigga who making music of course he gonna make it for his hood and whatever he making it for but he wants some hoes right he ain't doing it for for, for your partners you ain't putting all this shit on for your for a dude, I hope not. Right. He doing it for, you know what I'm saying, somebody he's trying to attract. Well, some dudes, they want, they want to, like, make hard music to impress other dudes so that they can make yeah, money to, so that they can have yeah. cars and clothes and shit to impress girls. You kind of just go straight to the source and I make music to that it. the girls I are going to I cut out the middle, man. I go straight <laughs> to it. You feel me? So, and it, and it work out. You know what I'm saying? That the female's going to always buy your shit. You know what I'm saying? The kid's going to, you know what I'm saying? If you, if you can get the youth, you can inspire the youth, they're going to always buy your shit. You know what I'm saying? The dudes ain't gonna buy your shit. They gonna, you know what I'm saying? I ain't never just met a dude who like, oh, let me let me go get that Drake. He gonna go get that Drake because a, a bad bitch he didn't seen or fucking with bumping Drake and he he wanna get close to the bitch, so he gonna try to download some Drake mm. and play that Drake around. Oh, some K Kemp, you know what I'm saying? What's your view? <laughs> same vibe. <laughs> what's your view on on Drake and like the greatness of his career? Like, what's your perspective on that as somebody who you know sort of makes music that could be considered similar to his? Yeah, it, he he took it there. You know what I'm saying? It, is it? He a prime example that making that type of sound, that type of music can put you on a platform where you can't be fucked with. Right. You know what I'm saying? It, and, and of course, you know, Wayne and all them stamps, it, it play a major role. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But God ain't done with me yet. You know what I'm saying? I'm still, I'm still fresh. I'm, 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 I just turned 31. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I'm young and I, and I, and I, I ain't even hit my peak yet, bro. As far as like that motherfucker, I ain't even, you know what I'm saying? I'm still, I'm still cooking. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's got to be tough being Drake because it's like if you're going to put out a 15 song album and you're working for three, four years on it and you you make rap music, you make R&B music, like, I mean, it just must be so hard for him to pick between styles. Do it you, is, though. Do you you feel that as well? That. Yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't, at that point in his career, he's so big, he, I, I can't speak for him, but you don't know what the fuck to put out. Mm. Cause you're you making an album every, for everyone. Yeah, you didn't did. You didn't touch every angle, so you don't know who want what. So you just really just 
I'm just, I'm just going to try to snap as hard as I can on the hardest beats for the culture, you know what I'm saying? Let that shit rock. Like a lot of people don't have that problem because, you know, if you... Just, like give a fuck. If you have one style of music, then it's like it's, making it's an that. album is pretty simple. But, yeah. but do you think that the best K-Camp album is realistically probably going to be a mix of both styles? Or do you think that it's going to be something that sort of I think both. leans on one or the other? I think both, depending on how much time I put into it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? If I'm if I'm in there locked in and I, and I got a, I got a, a, a set goal and I know I want this shit to be the hardest shit, both of them. Both of them. Makes sense. When did you actually sign to Interscope, who you've uh, had some issues with? 2014. 2014. Yeah. And so did, I got one more album. did it seem great at first? or Every deal seemed great at first. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They had the videos. They, they fucking with you. Shout out to Interscope. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no, ain't no bad blood. You know, we, um, we done had our ups and downs, our differences. But, you know, they came in clutch for Kiss 5. Mm. And I dropped again on the 13th. So, you know what I'm saying? It's the... It's the Second round, like, okay, let's see. Let's see what y'all got for me. Right. You know what I'm saying? And after this, I got one more project, and I'm in fully independent. Yeah, because I run independent anyway. Okay. Because you came out and made it clear that you weren't super happy with uh, how things were going yeah, at one point. Yeah, I had button a couple of years ago. What, that two years ago, but, a year ago? But so then what do they do? Do they just, like, reach out to you and, and try to make things better after that? Were they apologetic? Yeah, it was something, something, something of that nature. You know what I'm saying? I was just fed up. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I was doing so much on my end, dropping projects, you know what I'm saying? Lottery went up. That lottery went up. We did that mm. on the independent scale. Shout out to Empire and, you know what I'm saying, guys in there. But that wasn't like a major push. That was like, you know what I'm saying, all the resources we had that we put together and turned shit up. So it was like, I was frustrated. Like, damn, I'm, I'm, I got one of the biggest songs in the world. And, and y'all ain't, y'all ain't, you know what I'm saying, turning this shit to the moon. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I, I just finally spoke out and, you know, we all sat down and we, we spoke and, you know, and the rest was history. Is it hard to keep a label's attention when you've been doing your thing for so long and they're always signing new course, artists and shit like like because you notice that 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 happens now like juicy j put out a song about columbia records yeah and they fucking finally like gave him attention and i think let him out of his contract yeah. because he made a big fucking stink about it's it a, it's a revolving door man it's always some new shit going on it's like a basketball team you know what i'm saying every year it's a fucking a draft mm. you know what i'm saying you're looking for a new star for your team you know what i'm saying this shit is this is a revolving door and at the end of the day, it's is if you already on that team, are you the superstar? Are you the are you the are you the Hall of Fame? Put like what you is, mm. you know what I'm saying? So you really gotta go to practice every day, put in the work, discipline yourself, really tap in and become that fucking household name. Mm. And it don't matter who come next because you already got your shit locked in. Right, you know what I'm saying? It's always gonna be. I watched that interview with Jay Z when he talked about that white space for a long time. I even was chasing that white space. That white space is when you pop and everybody on you. Mm. The, the world on your fame, everything you do, whatever you say, ugh, they own it, they own it, they own it. As artists, we all live for that spot. Because mm. when I, when my white space, white space kind of slow, slowly faded, I was, ah, let me, ah, you know what I'm saying? Till I realized, like, that shit is a moment. Mm. It's only a moment. You ain't gonna, you ain't gonna be scorching, scorching hot forever. What you do with that moment when you scorching hot is gonna really depend. It's gonna, it's gonna translate. Two, three, four, five years in your mm. career, like how you really gonna maintain, and is you gonna be around, or you gonna be just in that white space and just be flipping burgers at Five Guys, or you know what I'm saying, BK. You know right. what I'm saying? It just, well, shout out to all our burger salesmen. Out shout there. out to all the burger salesmen because I once was a burger salesman. Anything is possible, bitch. <laughs> but um, yeah, man, this shit, this shit, this shit, crazy, man. I, I learned a lot in these last couple of years, man. When I got pushed back to the to the back burner with my label, you know what I'm saying. And do they tell you that? Are they like you're on the back burner? No, nah, hell no. Nah. It, <laughs> it just, just slowly, it just, it just, like, it just was that. Stop picking up calls like the way that they used to. It wasn't even shit. picking up calls. It was just I was in a situation. It wasn't even, honestly. It wasn't Interscope. It was a production management deal that I was in. I was I was so tied up in. I was so fucked up that I couldn't even do business with Interscope due to the management and production company was the middleman. So anytime I try to reach out, they like what they talking about. Right. You get what I'm saying? And I wasn't fucking with them. So it was like mm. the communication was all fucked up. So during that time, it's like, shit, what the fuck we going to do? Just keep complaining? Mm. Or we going to work and figure this shit out and pull the curtains back and figure out what the fuck really going on? Right. And use all the knowledge that we gained to our benefit. I feel it. You get what I'm saying? For sure. So I, I ain't sit back and start bitching. Like, you know what I'm saying? I went on the internet. Every foot. I, 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 I spazzed out when it was when it was necessary, when I had the, the leverage to spazz out. Mm. I was going nuts. You know what I'm saying? But before that, you never heard me just, oh, fuck all this shit. 
Never want to be no crybaby ass rapper. One thing, y'all motherfuckers stop crying and whining, because niggas going to look at you like a little bitch, and they going to goddamn treat you such, as such. You know what I'm saying? They put you in that category where they don't want to fuck with you if you're doing too much whining and crying. Handle your shit like a man. Turn the fuck up. Learn some shit. And go get it. Yeah, rappers complaining about their labels is like YouTubers. That shit ain't gonna work. But it's like YouTubers complaining about YouTube, like taking the ads off their yeah, video. It's like, like we get it. Everybody yeah, goes through everybody it. Everybody go through it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> everybody didn't have they, they they moments where they didn't didn't spoke out. Of course, speak out. Don't be no, mm. you know what I'm saying? Don't be no hoe and just let motherfuckers bully you and treat you like like a little ass pup. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But don't go on the internet just crying and we didn't seen this shit 10, 20 years. We didn't, we didn't, what you gonna do about it? Mm. You know what I'm saying? You gonna you gonna you gonna walk into the office. You know what I'm saying? Talk to your label, form a deal, like let me, you know what I'm saying? What you gonna do? You gonna try to get out? You gonna pay your way out? You what you what you gonna do to get out your situation? You know, what do you think it is about you that gave you like the the perseverance to go through all these ups and downs and to just keep going? Cause he's like, you don't see that that often. I'm cut different, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like I said in the beginning, I had a vision. I got a huge vision. Mm. My my I've been I've been writing on vision boards since 2012. Really? You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm on that out with the devil. All these books, you know what I'm saying, good to great, all these fucking books, I'm really, like, locked in on some mental shit, like, and once I had my shit locked in, you can't tell me what I can't do or what I'm not going to do. Even if I got a big-ass roadblock in my way, and the world try to count me out, and the world try to say, nah, he done, he he fell off, he blah, 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 blah. That's y'all opinion. Mm. Y'all don't know what the fuck I got going on, and y'all don't know what the hell I'm moving in the background that's going to... Sling shot my ass up to the top. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So it's like, I really, I, I'm at the stage now, I, don't, I, I can't really depend on outside opinions and what they think. I didn't heard it all. Like I said, I'm tuned in. I didn't seen everything motherfuckers said about me. Mm-hmm. They thought I was through. You know what I'm saying? I didn't read so much to the point where I thought I was through for one second. So I had to slap myself and feel like, the fuck? Like, get back on, get back on point. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, so. And, and that's where I'm at with it. And that's why I'm still going. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I got a thriving independent label. It's soon to be the biggest in the world. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Of course, and myself. And I still ain't got a number one album or number one song yet. So Gucci ain't getting a number one record till 15 years in his career with Ray Stream. <laughs> True. You get what I'm saying? What, um, but okay, when you go in the studio and you're doubting yourself, like, does that make you make better music or does that make you, uh, have you ever like gone in the studio and you were doubting yourself and, and you were worse as a result? I make the best music when I'm mad, bro. Really? Cause real emotion. When I made that homecoming, that 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 homecoming freestyle you talking about, right? I seen the tweets. I was in my bed seeing the tweets. Right. Jumped up out the bed, drove to the studio, took two shots of Don Julio, and recorded myself and, and put that bitch out like an hour later. Really? That's what I got. Wow. It's just, it's real emotion. I'm going off, you know, what I'm saying real time instead of just letting shit die out and I ain't feeling the same way. I'd rather get in there where I'm feeling like that and really like express myself and. Phew, push the button right i thought it was interesting that you uh clearly felt you know disrespected by those comments that, oh, yeah, that yeah, you yeah. had to read and w- okay but those are random comments i'm sure you read random negative comments sure. every day sure. what was it about that and for the record for the people who don't remember it was like you were announced that you were playing this like homecoming concert right and then it kind of was like almost a meme where you had like a bunch of people being like right. we don't we don't want k right. camp we want somebody right. else right. right so it was just at at, at that time you know what I'm saying? I was in my bed chilling, you know what I'm saying? Can't, can't tell you what was going on, but I was, I was relaxing. I was, I was cool. The homecoming was not a big deal to me. Mm. So it became a thing where you probably like, have shows like that all the yeah, time, Yeah, right? you know what I'm saying? So I'm one. like, bro, if y'all don't want me there, I won't come there. You know what I'm saying? I think I said something like that, and it got retweeted and, and blasted out onto some shit. I'm like, oh, this shit didn't got out of hand. So now I'm just seeing all type of bullshit coming from it's 50% of the school saying yeah, 50% of the school saying no. You know what I'm saying? So I just, I said, fuck it. I'm not, you know what I'm saying? I'm a man at the end of the day. I'm not going to travel four, five, three, however the fuck long the plane ride is, driving, whatever it is, to go to a school that don't want to see me. Mm. I don't give a fuck if I rap. I don't give a fuck if I make music. Like, nigga, I'm a grown ass man. I'm not about to go. You ain't about to go even if, fuck rap. Don't even talking about... You're not about to go anywhere where you, you, don't, you don't feel like you want, you know what I'm saying? They right, want you there. Yeah. So why the fuck will I get out of my bed watching a good ass Netflix show, smoking good, eating good, you know what I'm saying? Why would I get out of my space to go somewhere that they don't want me? But do you feel like that's given the haters or the anonymous Twitter commenters like a to little a bit point, too much power? To a point. 
And that's when I made the song. Because probably like, had thousands and thousands and thousands of people who go to that school that were would happily show up to oh, see yeah, for you sure. and didn't even bother to look at Twitter that for day. For sure, for sure. You know? and, 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 that, and that was the case, you know what I'm saying? I can honestly say I let my emotion get the best of me. You know what I'm saying? That I was too too in my phone that day. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Some we people got, got there. Yeah, I was too in my phone that day. And I was like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? You know who the fuck I am, Tyson? You know what I'm saying? I was on my ego trip. Mm. But at the end of the day, you can't beat the internet. But... You can't beat K Camp in the studio either. Mm. <laughs> so I went to the studio and played my game, put the record out, didn't say shit else about it. Right. Smashed. Mm. <laughs> Do you feel like, you know, because a lot of rappers like court controversy. Yeah. And that's one thing that I was trying to find. I'm like, K Camp has to have beef with somebody over the years. Yeah. My beast be behind the not scenes. Much. My beast be behind the scenes. Right. I don't do public beef. If I got some real smoke, like it's some behind the scenes shit. And normally, like if you're like a cool R&B slash rapper or whatever, you might not be beefing with other rappers on some street shit, but you usually have like a baby mama that you're beefing with or something like that. I and I, I couldn't that. really find that from you either. So I feel like you're kind of missing out on something there. You might want to look into that more. I'm, I'm missing out. <laughs> I mean, hell no. Nah. But we know that we know that we know that beef and all that bullshit cause controversy, which cause looks and PR. You know what I'm saying? We know what come with that shit. Right. But like I said, when you see me coming, when I when you going you gonna see it. Trust right. me. Definitely. Trust me. You ever think about doing love and hip hop? They asked me to do it like. Three months ago, and you you said no. Is it a hard no or like a maybe no? Ah, uh, caps, no. <laughs> Why? No, that's not me. It's just not you. It's or not me, bro. What part of it is not you? I feel like love and hip hop is that that phase where they be like, ah, right, yeah, like you know, what I'm saying you did what you had to do in the game or whatever you're doing. Mm. Like, come come get on the show. Nah, you ain't about to put me in that that world. You know what I'm saying? Like, straight. Yeah, because that's kind of like you telling the world, like, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of over being yeah, like I'm, a top I'm, rapper. Yeah, because I'm no, has anyone ever gone on Love and Hip Hop? And no, I'm not, it could happen. Cardi. Cardi became big after that. You feel me? Cardi, yeah. uh, K. Michelle. Um, it's a couple of folks who, it, it's, it, you got to be real strategic how you play that shit. There's a lot of hip hop legends in it, but very rarely do you somebody, see somebody go do that while they're still in the middle of the prime of their exactly. career. Exactly. Like, yeah. if you didn't already did what the hell you had to do, of course I'd take that free bag at Love and Hip Hop. If I'm down... 40 some years old Like right. fuck it Yeah yeah I go grab that shit But Not right now mm. You know what I'm saying If anything I do my own reality show Based on me And my characters And my homies And my my lifestyle mm. I ain't about to do Nobody else lifestyle You ain't about to put me In somebody else shit And tell me to do some shit Like nah mm. Like I said I can't tell people People can't tell me What to do I don't Mentally that shit Don't work in my head For sure How, how did you uh, Survive the pandemic What was your Your strategy my strategy to surviving the pandemic was a lot of Call of Duty and 2K. Okay. <laughs> I was in the park a lot. You know what I'm saying? I ain't had no time to be outside. I was really in the park. Right. Now I'm just bullshit. <laughs> but, um, shit, I stayed in the house like everybody else. Went to Sam's Club, racked up on groceries, <laughs> 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 learned how to cook some shit. You know what I'm saying? During that time, that's when I was really tapped in, trying to learn some new shit. You know what I'm saying? I got into the trucking business. I got 18 wheelers. You know what I'm saying? Like. Oh, really? I, I do a, you know, I be, I be working my move. That's one of your investments that yeah. you uh, sort of figured out. Yeah, red trucking. Interesting. Yeah. How's that going? It's beautiful. It's, it's, it's it got its ups and downs, but it's good money. Yeah, the the downs must be all the Atlanta street rappers who want you to throw something <laughs> else on one of those trucks, right? Nah, the downs <laughs> is when your damn driver got down quit or something. That and you gotta find. Hell yeah, it's hard, hard as fuck to find drivers. Do you have somebody like managing it, or is it like yeah, you, got, you're the one no, no, getting no, no, the no, new no, driver? No, 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 okay. no, 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 hell no. That sounds like I got a lot my, for you to handle. Yeah, my assistant do that. You know what I'm saying? My dispatch company, all they handle all that logistic shit. Okay. I just look at the the wire hit my account. Okay. <laughs> That's dope. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You in a relationship right now? That's my girl over there. I figured. I seen you tagging her on Instagram. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> How long you been in that? Oh, we about to be a year. Yeah. I've been on her for a minute, though. Is that like your first serious relationship as a rapper or no? Mm -mm. This is my first public relationship. Okay. All my other relationships are private. Uh -huh. I ain't like people in my shit, but you know. New, new, new levels, new devils. How long did you have to be <laughs> kicking it with her before you realized, like, all right, I'm ready to make this public? How long I know you for? Like three years, four years, four. But you were kicking it, like actually seeing each other for yeah. that long, and then finally you were like, all right, let's for make sure. it public. You know what I'm saying? We did, you know, we was vibing out. I think it was during the pandemic for real. Right. That's what I got out the that's, pandemic. That's honestly kind of what I was thinking with <laughs> the pandemic is everybody sort of got in relationships yeah. during the pandemic. I think it was a pandemic relationship, you know what I'm saying? But it ended up working out. We just on the phone every day, just, you know what I'm saying? We from the same city, you know what I'm saying? Like, we relate, you know what I'm saying? She, she a Gemini, I'm a Taurus, you know what I'm saying? It balanced out. 
You know what I'm saying? She teaches me a lot of shit that I don't know about myself. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So it worked out. It's good to hear. Yeah, for sure. No good. Um, yeah. Ah, man, there's like, there's so many fucking songs of yours that I realized were yours or like, <laughs> yeah. it's like got to rethink about yeah. being yours. Like, what was it like living through the It Ain't Nothing to Cut That Bitch Off era? Like, that must have been Beautiful. fucking crazy. Like, what, what, and when you have a son that's that big, like, how does your life change? Are you just on the road? Non-stop doing all these clubs and shows and stuff, and then man, we was on the road for two and a half years, bro. I've just cut it off of money, baby. Honestly, just wow. two and a half years. So it was one of them things. Like I went from no shows, not doing nothing, to to the recording in the, in the crib, staying with my manager, managers and shit, to being gone and and just you know what I'm saying life just hitting you. You don't really know what the fuck going on. You know that you're going to this city to pick up thirty. You're going to this city to pick up forty. You just uh uh. You know what I'm saying the money in your face, your drink, your lifestyle, your, that shit different. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying and and that caused me not to know what the fuck was really going on mm -hmm. during that time because you get blinded by just the lifestyle. Right. You know what I'm saying? And you don't know what the fuck really happening. What do you mean like the business shit is kind of fucked up in regards to was, actual music? Because you're man. getting 30,000, 40,000 a day. You're thinking everything's all good. Everything all good. You know what I'm saying? Then you, and you pull the curtains back and see, oh shit, fucked up. Uh. You know what I'm saying? And that's when shit get, you know, every artist go through it unless you come in the game just already on that mindset. Like you know what the fuck you're doing. But if you don't know what you're doing, if you're young, I came in the game young. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I was blinded. I was, I was having fun. Everything was getting handled. My mama always used to tell me, look at your business, tune into your business. I was just ignoring the shit, ignoring the shit, ignoring the shit till it slapped me in the face. And mm -hmm. I had no choice but to grab that shit by the horns and turn this shit back up. Right. Yeah, I had a, a dude on the show the other day who like won this huge reality show. Yeah. And I was asking him like, what do you do after like you win that reality show? And he's like, Oh, you got it. Because I, I was kind of thinking like, oh, you should like fall back because shit's going to be so crazy. He's yeah. like, nah, like you you go, you do every podcast, you do every TV show, you do every collaboration you possibly can. And yeah. I'm thinking like, that's basically what it's like to have a hit record yeah, as a rapper sure. is you for have sure. to just lean you into it go. and sop up every little bit of benefit you can get from you that. You got to go. That's that white space. Yeah. That's that white space. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You know, the sooner, you know what I'm saying? These days, how long, how long a hit record lasts? Six to... A year, yeah. If that, it's some shit that came out that motherfuckers just be like uh, two months. It's like, uh, I don't oh know. yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, depending on how strong the record is and how how much it impact the culture, mm -hmm. that's how big that space is. So you gotta go crazy in that space. You gotta get all the money you can, mm -hmm. unless you got enough talent to make another fucking hit. Mm -hmm. A lot of folks can't make another fucking hit. But then you also like when you're in that white space, you then also have to realize and stay conscious of the fact that. Just because this shit is happening to you right now, that doesn't define who you are as a person. And yeah. that when that when the heat from that single dries up, that you still are what you are. Exactly. Because when you look through the graph of your YouTube analytics, and you know there, there's time periods where my shit will be through the fucking roof, and then it'll cool off for a while, and then it's through the roof. Mm -hmm. And it's like when you're in that period where it's through the roof, it's tempting to feel like this is just where I'm at right now. And if I start doing worse than this, mm -hmm. then I fucked up. Yeah. And that's realistically like, and it's cool that you get that. Cause you're talking about like how you'll just pop up on the scene for three, four months, really go hard and then just kind of dip off because mm -hmm. that is the natural order. That's of how, things, that's how you know? styles work. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Go up and down. You know what I'm saying? If you, if you understand that shit, you, you understand like that shit ain't going, you know what I'm saying? Shit. Yeah. <laughs> it just can't. You feel me? It's impossible unless you motherfucking unless we living in two thousand seventy eight. You know, since seventy eight in the in the, in the in the in the game, the game plan and motherfuckers is robots and sh you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it ain't possible, bro. Even if we were to look at like Drake's YouTube analytics, it's like right now it would be like the quiet time it's in calm. comparison as to a lot of other dropped, times. You that know, shit gone, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So it's like you got to know your seasons, bro. His career would look all fucked up if he was trying to make sure that he was still popping at every single fucking moment exactly. so there was never any exactly. low points. You, and you know? burn yourself out. Yeah. You burn yourself out mentally trying to keep up with all that shit. And it's three, three, 365 days in a year, man. Mm. How many of those days that you mentally was like, man, fuck all this shit? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. You feel me? So the Kiss series is done. Are yeah. You, are, and are you like plotting on like a big return to putting out projects that are not? titled that do you want to like switch it up because of that and because those were so r&b heavy my me personally you know what i'm saying I, I just want to put the kiss kiss series to bed i've been doing this shit since 2012 bro mm. you know what i'm saying five was just the one i just wanted to close it out with i wanted to make sure it sounded good sonically and the vibe was there i touched every point but 
I told my fans, only only way they're going to get a kiss six if I got, like, Rihanna on that bitch. Mm. If I got Beyonce on that bitch. If I got the biggest on that bitch. That's the only reason why. If if I ain't doing that, you're going to get just, you know what I'm saying? You're going to get great albums. You're going to get great music. But as far as a full body of work full of just R&B shit, mm. you know what I'm saying? Riri Call. You know what I'm saying? Maybe at least keep. I need some big shit on there. I need, I need some song. You heard Donda? Have you heard that motherfucker? I have not heard it. That shit sound crazy. Really? I don't have music. You think that's I went gonna, to the first one. That's going to elevate the level of how everything is judged. But he been doing that. But the way he got this shit now, that shit made me want to goddamn go put my studio, my album back in there and go, you know what I'm saying, cook some more shit up. I keep seeing everybody talk about Donda being really good, even the people that probably aren't trying to say anything nice about exactly. Kanye. Exactly. That shit sound hard. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He, The way he doing it, how can it not be hard? Pause. You know what I'm saying? Like, you in, the, you in the dome, you bringing every fucking talent that you know. You got Mike Dan, you got every fucking talent, and you got the access to everybody. Yeah. You cutting vocals, it's, it's all post production. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, you, can, you can have a, a track, me, me rapping on the song. Somebody can rip my whole vocals from that beat, put that bitch on, make another beat around that beat, add a choir around that bitch, add fucking percussion. Add, you know what I'm saying? It's so much shit. Mm. And that's how you get the shit to sound, yeah. Oh. But do you ever take it there in terms of your own music, or is it typically like you make what you make in the studio? I did it with Kiss 5. But do you go back and revisit it, or is that just you and the producer banging shit out? Banging that shit out okay. until it's time to drop. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like that, That's how you're supposed to do it. You know what I'm saying? You got to really like... And you can tell the difference between a lot of folks' albums who just drop shit, you know what I'm saying, just put some shit out. And, you know what I'm saying, an album that's like, oh, he took his time. And real engineers and producers understand. People that's really in music, they understand, like, you know what the fuck he doing? Oh, he just rapping. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I know what the fuck I'm doing. I've heard Kanye leaks that were like, you could hear three different songs, but they're all in one song. But that's then by I'm the saying. time the album came out, those three different parts were in three different songs, and there's a Young Thug verse on it, right. and that never came. And you I'm just like, me? this dude must really be tweaking out, losing his fucking mind if he's and, and doing do this do much that. variety to yeah. the song. It's that pretty shit, unbelievable. That shit, you know what I'm saying? That shit fuck you up because it's, it's really like. <laughs> Putting together a motherfucker with some little cues and the Rubik's cube. You know what I'm saying? Trying yeah. to get that bitch perfect. Like you always tweaking shit. You, that process is a motherfucker. A lot of folks can't do that process. That right. shit really like seven a.m. You know what I'm saying? All the way to seven a.m. in the morning. Because everybody up. we know is well, for me at least, most of the rappers I know they go in the studio, they make a song, and then that song never gets touched. Besides to like tweak it and master oh, yeah. it, just mix it and yeah. put that bitch out. Right. And that's cool too. I do the same shit. It, it, it depends on what the what the situation is. Mm. If you're trying to give, a, give these motherfuckers a, a great album, you got to do that. You got to really take that time. But if you're trying to just put out some quick shit for YouTube or something for the, for, for the DSPs, yeah, drop that shit. Because mm. you never know. Uh, remember uh, XXX song, that, that song he put out, uh, Look At Me? Mm. That motherfucker was not mixed. No. That motherfucker sounded like it came out Garage Band, but that I, shit went up. And I think the version that you hear on iTunes now is like a totally changed yeah, version. Like of I think course. the original version on SoundCloud sounds Man, that so shit much was, worse. Yeah, yeah, that shit was lo fi as hell, like yeah. lo fi beat. But you know what I'm saying? Like, is it whatever the people want? Because mm. you know what I'm saying? You got you to understand too the consumer, the average consumer, they don't fucking know what's mixed and what's not. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That shit hidden in your car, hidden on your, Apple, on your iPhone, and you know what I'm saying? Who gives a fuck? Did you feel like you got some some degree of like the recognition that you want or whatever when the whole renegade lottery controversy was happening? Because I felt like I saw so many people saying K Camp is a legend. Y'all need to respect what he's done yeah. in this game, etc. Like people that I just didn't know felt that way. I seen them coming out of the yeah, woodwork to, sure. to make that clear that they felt that way. And it was kind of like a, a strange scenario for them to be voicing that. But right. I, I thought that was pretty cool. And they always do that. You got a lot of recognition in the context of let's give this young black girl who's clearly super talented and is kind of having her shit ripped off by mm -hmm. these bigger influencers. Let's yeah. give her credit. Right. But while we're at it, let's also give Kid yeah, Gabe his dues. Me my shit too. What was it I like that. living through that? Um, it was good. You know what I'm saying? It's, you know what I'm saying? When you, when you get acknowledged for some, some shit you've been doing over the years, for years, for years, for years, it's like about fucking time. Mm. You get what I'm saying? It's, it's one of them about fucking time moments because I've been at this shit. I've been, before y'all heard lottery and all that shit, I've been doing it. You know what I'm saying? So for the world, they acknowledge, okay, he he's serious. It's like, all right, bet it give you, it give you more fresh legs. Like, all right, let me let me let me keep doing this shit. And, and to this day, like when you said underrated, I'm not underrated. I'm undefeated. Mm. At this point, I'm undefeated. You know what I'm saying? So 
it's like that 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 narrative underrated slept on you know what i'm saying i'm trying to i'm trying to just just move away from that shit because at this point i'm tired of hearing i've been hearing that shit since i started my career like okay how long you gonna call a motherfucker underrated and i know why the term underrated is being used it's all because it's media you know what i'm saying you get the proper looks you get the you know what i'm saying the good pr the 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 billboard walk you know all that good shit you you not classified as underrated you either overrated or you just oh he popping but if you you know what I'm saying you ducked off and you doing your own thing, mm. of course they gonna call you underrated. Cause what the fans don't know what the fuck really underrated mean. They just say it. They see it on the internet. Mm. It's a word that's been traveled around. Everybody like, oh yeah, he underrated. He underrated. If you ask them, what's underrated, what they gonna tell you? What's the rating? Who's who's doing the ratings? Who's doing the ratings? Where it's coming from? Like who who is the source of the underrated? Mm. There are no list. ratings, truthfully. You get what I'm saying? So it's like, it's, it's, just a, it's just a word that's just thrown out there that people just caught on to and they gravitate to. Mm. And it's just time to change the narrative. You know what I'm saying? It's undefeated. I feel it. You know what I'm saying? For sure. When when are you planning on dropping again? What's the idea? And are you worried because all these concerts are getting fucked up because Corona's back, apparently? Nope. I drop in four <laughs> days. Four days? Yep. That's it? Four days. I could have had an advanced copy of this project. We can get it to you. Oh, that'd be great. I drop in four days. Yeah. So that's why we're doing this. Now I understand. I'm being hoodwinked. Yeah. <laughs> Four days. The album is called Float. Float. That's me. Okay. K Camp has turned into Float. How many verses are on there? Like, how much singing versus rapping? Um, about, I say about 75, 25. Okay. More verses than singing. That's solid. Yeah. Probably like 30, 65. Wait, 75% rapping or 75% singing? I probably got two, two, three songs on this RB. Okay, really? It's 15, 15 project, 15, yeah, yeah. Now, was that like a big intentional decision, or was that just kind of how it came out? It's how it came out. I wanted to be more, you know what I'm saying, the clubs. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I gave Kiss Five, that's a whole R&B project, I'm about to keep, I'm not an R&B ad, I'm not an R&B singer. Right. I just know how to make R&B shit, you know what I'm saying? So I know how to keep giving y'all just R&B like I'm Bryson Tiller or mm. Black, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to them, I love them, but that's not, you know what I'm saying? I'm a rap nigga singing R&B shit, so people try to try to classify me on that slow wine and mm. hit rolling type. Shit. I'm not on that. You know right. what I'm saying? I'm just, I just, <laughs> I'm just good at it, bro. <laughs> That's what's up for sure. Yeah. Um. Okay. So float, floats on the way. Floats on the way. And uh, yeah, anything else that the people need to know? Anybody you want to thank? Anything you want to say to the fans? Uh, thank everybody tuning into the campaign. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, y'all, y'all didn't see me. Y'all didn't see my journey. Y'all didn't see what I done done. Y'all didn't see y'all about to see what I'm about to do. Um, shout out to my gang, Rare Sound. Uh, Rare Sound. Uh, the Rare Family album is out. The Deluxe is out. True Story G, Buckethead Shorty coming. Uh, coming real soon. Bird, when you get back from. I can't remember where the fuck you is, but he is far. He is far away. When you get back, we dropping you soon. Uh, trapping in London. Everybody on the on the, on the, on the on the on the on the side. You know what I'm saying? We locked in. Float coming. They know what I do. You know this shit gonna just elevate me to a whole other thing. That's gonna just bring everything I got going on up a little more. You know what I'm saying? So all that shit strategic. You know what I'm saying? I'm almost independent. Shout out to Interscope though. We still working. We still rocking. We got a lot of work to do. But um. Shout out to you. You know what I'm saying? I didn't think you was this cool. I like, I like. <laughs> nah, for sure. I didn't think you was that cool. I thought you was going to come say some bullshit to well, me. But really? you gave me some great questions and I love it. I don't know. That's cool. Appreciate it. Because you, you, you be trying, you be trying, motherfucker. I'm not going to black China you. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> I, know how to, I, know how to, I know how to play that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? No, for sure. Um, yeah, I appreciate it, man. It was a good conversation. For and sure. uh, yeah, the music the music's going crazy. So everybody go cop that project when it drops. You dig? You dig. Gang. K Camp. No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube, Patreon, SoundCloud, iTunes, all that shit. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, nojumper.com if you want to support. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you. Much love. Love.